Assalamu alaikum. I'm Carl Arundel and you are watching In Focus. Uh, this week, people from around the world looked on as business mogul and apprentice TV presenter Donald Trump assumed the throne as the 45th president of the United States, following one of the most acrimonious election battles in America's history. Women's marches against Trump last weekend took place in all corners of the globe and especially across the United States in, as protests at the new president's inauguration. Political scientists have suggested that demos represent probably the largest day of protest in US history, saying that approximately three to five million marchers, that's about one in every hundred Americans, took to the streets on that day in different cities. Now, there were three quarters of a million protesters in Washington alone. The story was repeated across Europe, and here in London, over 100,000 marchers made their way to the through the capital to the American embassy on what was effectively Trump's first full day in his presidency. The protests actually started uh, in London on the Friday morning of the inauguration, with anti-Donald Trump banners being unveiled across the London's iconic locations. There was a huge banner draped across Tower Bridge in big pink letters saying, Act now, build bridges, not walls. Or there was another over Westminster Bridge which read, Migration is older than language. A banner outside the Houses of Parliament said, Migrants welcome herewith. Obviously, all this was referring to his proposals to build a wall between the US and Mexico. Thousands more protested online under hashtags such as bridges, not walls. Many have been horrified by some of the pledges made by Trump in the lead up to the election and have held their breath in the hope that perhaps it was just pre-election rhetoric. Leaders of the Stop the War movement in Britain have asked whether we are now entering a more dangerous world. With me to discuss the implications and the new world order, I'm delighted to be joined by prominent Labour Party activist, former London Assembly member and now chair of the Stop the War Coalition in the UK, Murad Qureshi. Assalamu alaikum, Murad, and welcome to In Focus. Wa alaikum salam. Now, you attended the celebrations in Chicago as a member of the London Assembly during the Obama inauguration. How does this one compare? Well, Chicago in 2008 was quite, quite, quite different. Uh, my brother was li had just moved there, and uh, there was hope and anticipation. Uh, there certainly wasn't any of that uh, this, uh, this uh, fr uh, past Friday. And it's quite clear to me that uh, most of the world is quite alarmed uh, by the prospect of a Donald Trump uh, regime at uh, the White House. Uh, you've only got to see what he said in his uh, speech. Uh, he sounded like a very angry uh, old man to me and putting America first, uh, whether it be trade or militarily, uh, has got uh, huge implications for the world order that we've got accustomed to. Well, we're going to get on to that in a minute, but what about the flavour? I mean, look, when you were there, there, there have been talks that there were sort of many, many more times the number of people turning out in celebration Indeed, of yeah. Obama, mm. uh, and then there was a big row because there was false news being put around, mm. or at least there were suggestions that it was. Um, what, what, what was, it, in your well, opinion, the difference in atmosphere? Well, there was certainly a sense of hope uh, in Chicago when, when, when I was there at the outset of Obama's time. Uh, you know, the first Afro-American president of the USA was hugely significant, both domestically and globally. Um, and the rhetoric and the way he spoke made, made it feel that uh, there were huge expectations here that, uh, that we would have a different America as a result well, of it. Well, his poll ratings were certainly twice apparently as high Indeed. as those of Trump apparently uh, yeah. uh, in this inauguration. And that's not to say that, that there aren't things he's done wrong. I mean, you just have to mention drones and what have you, and he didn't manage to uh, close Guantanamo Bay, which was one of his key planks if, when he got elected. But nonetheless, in comparison to the, the demonstrations and remonstrations against Trump, and his rhetoric, uh, it was a completely different context altogether. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, there were less people uh, who turned up to see him um, um, pledge allegiance to, to America as the president-elect, and yet they put out propaganda that there were actually more people there when we could all see for ourselves quite clearly uh, what there is. It also shows, unfortunately, uh, he, wa he wants to do battle with uh, the, the, the media and, uh, and on points of fact. Uh, there's no doubt uh, there were more people there in Obama's uh, inauguration speech than there was uh, when he was. And it does show a side of him 
which, uh, which is very self-centered and antagonistic. And you only just have to watch uh, what he says on his Twitter feeds to well, realize. Well, I'm going to go on to that. To realize. Last night, he, yeah. he, he, he sent a Twitter out saying, uh, big day planned on national security tomorrow. Um, and among many things, uh, he said, we will build the wall. Now, President Donald Trump, he's expected to sign executive orders today uh, that include a temporary ban on most refugees and a suspension of visas of citizens from Syria and six other Middle Eastern and African countries. It does indeed seem, after all, that he will make good on his promise to instigate, and I quote, a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. How bad is that? Well, he said that he would do it, and he did back off uh, on it towards the end. But as you've just highlighted, the executive order has come through. He had, he ha he had one of the most racist, Islamophobic campaigns that we'll ever see, I think. Uh, it was beyond the, the norms of acceptability, even in American politics. And I think a lot of people were very, very, very embarrassed, if, 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 if nothing else, uh, by that rhetoric. The wall, quite honestly, is, is uh, I think, a figment of his imagination still. I don't, I'm not sure well, how people realistic... People said it's just not feasible, well, Yeah, right? it's not feasible, indeed. And even if the Mexicans are yeah. supposed to be paying for it, I indeed. don't know how. Well, there's that. But actually, he, he's, not very, he's not got his history uh, sorted. I mean, let's face it, California, New Mexico, Texas, these were actually Mexican parts of Mexico before America grabbed them. So he's not really fully au fait. And I think that Mexicans have a different perspective in all this than that we don't often hear here. Uh, as for the ban on uh, Muslims, it clearly affects me. Uh, I'm just grateful that the last time I went to America was to go and uh, go to Muhammad Ali's funeral. Uh, I'm Muhammad just, Ali the boxer. The boxer indeed. I, I, I dread to think if he had passed away during Trump's time, um, what it would have meant for me, it probably would have meant I could not go there uh, to, to, to give my last respects at his graveside. Now, one banner in central London in all this protesting mm. read, sadly, the world is against you right now, America. Is it fair to say that most of the world outside America is still in a state of shock and disbelief and that leaders of most major Western countries share those sentiments? Well, it's clearly, I think most of the world are very, very apprehensive about Donald Trump. Um, the uh, inaugural speech in itself was very, very um, uh, angry um, speech from a man who's a, a multi-billionaire, who's had life good and what have you. You really, one would have difficulty understanding what his angst was. And the, the reality is he's pledged himself to a number of things. Uh, which will dramatically change things. Uh, his diatribe against the Chinese. Uh, if there's one conflict in the world, it's not going to be just trade wars. It could very quickly escalate into military uh, uh, warfare in, in the South China Seas. Uh, given the antagonisms he's already made to them about uh, uh, recognizing Taiwan and, and against the one China philosophy, that's what, uh, a part of the world we've just got to look, look out for, not just what historically, uh, in recent so times, so the Americans this, have done in the Middle East. So are these comments, which everybody put down to potentially ignorance, uh, lack of uh, mm. etiquette, lack of understanding and total inexperience, is it that, or has he got a very serious agenda? Judging from his new cabinet, would you say that it's actually his agenda to break up those trade agreements, break up all those associations that we've enjoyed? Mm. Well, in terms of his cabinet, uh, the remarkable thing uh, is that in his rhetoric, he was saying he was going to go the, to Washington, D.C. to drain the swamp. Well, actually, there's so many billionaires <laughs> on that cabinet, if anything, he's put the alligators in charge of the swamp. Um, and that you can see substantially. You we, heard it here first, folks. There's a lovely quote: "Alligators in charge of the uh, of the swamp." Of the swamp, indeed. And and the um, and, and the reality is, actually, many of them are already during the uh, during their confirmation process are already suggesting that they're not quite with. Uh, Mr. Donald Trump, whether it be climate change, uh, relationships with Russia and whatever. Uh, so it'll be interest interesting to watch how he manages that, if he does at all. Because at the moment, uh, for certainly for the next two years, he's got Congress, he's got the Supreme Court, he can do very much what he likes. And that's the real danger. Now, I know you were formerly the chair of London Assembly's Environment Committee. Mm. Uh, how serious is it that the... Uh, that 
all of the progress that on CO2 mm. emission targets will now be just dashed aside as now the world's largest emitters, uh, the leader of the world's largest emitters, refuses to accept that there is a problem at all. Mm. Well, I mean, America has got form on this. They didn't actually ratify the Kyoto Agreement, the, the, uh, which was previous to the, the Paris uh, Agreement. But nonetheless, uh, uh, Obama did acknowledge the, the science and, and the, the, the realities of climate change induced by human activity. Now we've got a president that doesn't seem to acknowledge that at all in any way. Uh, and I think that really makes him the equivalent of uh, a, um, a flat earther during the Middle Ages. You know, then it was very easy to think when you're, uh, when you're operating on a flat earth that everything was, uh, uh, was around the earth. Well, actually, it was quite the converse. Here, we've got a president who thinks on a similar basis and is the equivalent of a flat earther now in the beginning of the 21st century. And that will make it incredibly difficult uh, to, to make progress on that front. Plus, there are strong fossil fuel and oil interests in his cabinet. For example, the, the gentleman that's become the, uh, the Secretary of State, the, the highest diplomat, Rex, I've forgotten his name. Um, but nonetheless, it just shows how, how um, how, how uh, that, well, it's going to be a ma another major difficulty to move or see any progress on that front is just recently, uh, well, just yesterday, I think, put an executive order to, to build one of the remaining contested oil pipes going through the whole of the states into Canada. Um, well, it, it will be a major battlefront. And when we were hoping to get some leadership uh, from, from the states, uh, we're not getting it, and if anything, uh, we're getting that leadership from the Chinese who, say, uh, who are at least honouring the Paris Agreement and want to make uh, a difference here, and certainly are doing in the type of investments they're making in clean air. It's a bit ironic, clean isn't it? Clean energy, sorry. That, that uh, Obama is being accused by many Trump supporters of having completely destroyed the coal industry. And I, I, I saw a clip the other day of a presenter having to correct a very irate a uh, Trump supporter <laughs> when they said, well, he, in his, his election campaign, he made a pledge to bankrupt the coal industry. He said, well, actually, no, he didn't pledge to bankrupt the industry. He said, those who choose to use crude methods that mm. are destroying our environment would be bankrupted. Uh, you know, it's ironic that, 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 that now he is uh, effectively uh, being seen as a saint in this respect, and, and Trump is now yeah. the destroyer. It, indeed, I mean, and it's, it's uh, I, 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 from, the, the, there's no sense that uh, he's persuaded by arguments or the evidence. And uh, if anything, uh, the, the evidence he sees, uh, he's prepared to put that out and suggest an alternative, uh, an, an alternative vision of facts and figures. Uh, now, moving on to the Middle East, uh, Trump has promised to move the U.S. embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem will no doubt have pleased many of the far right on the Israeli political spectrum. Um, should we be surprised to hear Israel announcing plans this week to commence massive new building programme of thousands of Jewish settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories, um, literally within hours of the swearing in of uh, the new U.S. president, in a move which was described by some as a comprehensive rejection of the December UN Security Council's resolution and a flagrant violation of international law and an obstacle to peace. What, in your opinion, are the implications, if anything, to world peace? Well, I mean, I'm very, very unfortunate um, um, that these developments have happened, um, uh, instigated by the, um, the Netanyahu government in, in Israel. Um, the only thing we've got can be thankful for from the Obama and John Kerry um, setup before um, Donald Trump came in was passing of the Security uh, Security Council motion uh, in in the UN in December about the settlements. Whilst America abstained, everyone else actually uh, signed uh, voted for that, including the British government, that these were illegal settlements. And on that basis, now in international law. Uh, that that will be the interpretation. Um, what we have now is uh, is, is uh, an, uh, an American uh, president uh, willing to act against that. Now, if there was one thing feature of the uh, after the Second World War, it was a world order based on rules of law 
and uh, uh, and America was actually instrumental in setting that up. Now uh, we're going to have a PM. Uh, although we should recognise that whilst there have been a unanimous acceptance of the Geneva Conventions, America has always stayed outside it. So it's good enough for everybody else, but we we can run our own. Affairs. But in, in the UN resolutions, that, that that I think that the the Security Council, I think it was significant. Yes, there are many people who would say that that should have happened earlier in Obama's time, and John Kerry should have been on that uh, on that uh, push pushing that further. Uh, but nonetheless, that's there, and that's the only only bit of hope we've got whilst all these moves are made. Quite where in Jerusalem this, uh, this embassy will be built is, is, a, is a mystery to me. Most new American embassies are huge complexes. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure in Jerusalem itself the, the, the land's there. And actually the reality is most, the, the legislation in, 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 uh, in the Congress has always been there for that, but it's not been instigated by any American president yet. That's not to say it won't. Um, and then the uh, Netanyahu encouraging more uh, settlements is, well, I, I think it's got to a point now where I don't, I, it, well, it's come to a point almost where the two-state solution is non-existent on the ground, and as, as they intended. Now, you mentioned, I think, earlier on about the nature of the election campaign being uh, almost unprecedented in mm. is Islamophobia and, and uh, racism. Um, Mm. Uh, one of the uh, organizers